Hey everybody, welcome back to Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here, another detour into the Star Trek world. It's uh, our review of uh, the third episode of Star Trek Picard uh, on CBS All Access and internationally on Amazon Prime. I'm enjoying the show, but I do have some issues, and also I'm kind of confused even after three episodes. And I, look, I, I understand it's you know going to be an 11 part story. And we'll get information in due time. But I am confused by uh, some of the things that are going on on the show. I still like it. I don't. I don't want that misunderstood. I think I uh, said that several times, not to convince myself, but to convince you. Despite my nitpicking, I've got Franco here again from the Aya Podcast and Aya Comics and uh, great DC books as well. Franco and I are hardcore Star Trek watchers. Maybe I'm a little more hardcore. I vaguely remember, and it's kind of with a little bit of pride. And also showing my age. Uh, Probably as a four-year-old kid in 1969, uh, dimly seeing Star Trek on uh, TV on a Friday night on uh, NBC. I know. Well, that's that's some kind of weird memory I've got. But um, that's how far back I go with Star Trek. Really got into it in the 70s when it was in syndication. And, of course, was thrilled by the motion picture thrilled when Next Generation happened. Much like uh, other Star Treks, first season not too great. Uh, And I will say right now, three episodes into Picard, I think it uh, does better than a lot of other Trek series did in their first season. Three episodes in. Um, But yeah, um, you know, again, we we discuss the episode, we talk about things that are driving us nuts, but also uh, things that we like, and things that we're laughing at as well. I think you'll enjoy this conversation about Star Trek Picard. It's all brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. Thank you greatly, League, for your support via Patreon, patreon.com slash Word Balloon. Uh, and I thank you very much uh, for everything you do in terms of sponsoring the show. Is Word Balloon worth a dollar a month to you? Is it worth the price of a comic book? I hope so. And uh, I thank you for your support, League of Word Balloon listeners. This episode also brought to you by Aftershock Comics, who are shaking things up in your local comic shop right now. Upcoming new titles, uh, John Layman's The Man Who Effed Up Time. Uh, I'll be talking to Johnny on Word Balloon in a couple days. Zach Thompson's Undone by Blood. God Killers by Mark Sable. Uh, They will be joining the Aftershock pantheon of comics. Great books like Animosity from Marguerite Bennett and Raphael de la Tour. A Walk Through Hell from Garth Ennis and Gordon Gordon Suzuka. And Baby Teeth with Donny Cates and Gary Brown. I mean, you know, there's also Dark Art from Colin Bunn and Juan Doe and uh, Tim Seeley's Dark Red and... Uh, great books by uh, my friends like uh, Paul Jenkins, Phil Hester, uh, Adam Glass and Aiden Glass, uh, the father-son writing team, uh, also Stephanie Phillips and Matthew Clickstein. So many great writers, so many great artists at Aftershock doing some incredible genre-bending books that I think deserve your attention. Go to their website. You'll find full story descriptions, preview pages, and how to get these stories digitally or through the Diamond Coats to order through your local shop at AftershockComics.com. All right, let's get into it now. Well, you'll excuse me while I clear my throat and get things started on this review of Star Trek Picard, Episode 3, on Word Balloon. All right, here we go. All right, good. Here we go. You like that one? I, I Glad that you got good. that all out of your system. Yeah, literally. As I'm hocking up, welcome back to another uh, review of Star Trek Picard. This is uh, Episode 3. And man, I'm so unprepared. But uh, welcome, Franco. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. I'm I'm uh, I'm even more unprepared. But hey, let me. I'm gonna as we're talking, I'll bring stuff up because we got feedback from the last episode. Ooh, uh, our episode, which was nice. Uh, people people commented. There's somebody listening. That's awesome. But yeah, episode three. Well, you know, while I'm, while I'm setting up episode three, a little thought on on the first two episodes, which I rewatched again a couple times to kind of like get a real sense of all right, what the hell's going on. That, can I give you a one big nitpick I've got? Yes, please. And also, you you were right. The the or whoever talked to you about the three episodes together is better and more explained than than just separately the way we watch them. Yes, no question. But go ahead, your nitpicky thing. Well, my nitpicking thing is about the, what they've said about the Romulans to explain the Jacques Vash, which is the double secret probation version of the Tal Shiar. <laughs> if you're Dean Warmer. That they have this hatred of cybernetics and uh, computers, and have you ever noticed that our computers only, or that we never got into making robots or artificial intelligence, and that our computers are basically used for numerical purposes only? 
Right. They're they're just basically abacuses. Yeah. It's yeah. like well, or like I said, it's like uh, I, I got a picture of a Texas Instrument calculator in my head, and I'm like, yeah, this is as far as ro- ro- Romulan computer technology right now. Hey, put in uh, put in uh, whatever upside down becomes hell. <laughs> <laughs> I love movies, this. right? If you if you do eight zero zero eight yeah. one something, <laughs> exactly. Hey, boobs. Ah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so there's that, but also even further. I, again, I hate to nitpick because I, in general, I like Star Trek Picard. I mean, mm-hmm. I, it's still fun and it's still interesting enough. But um, there's that episode of uh, Next Generation in particular. Because, like, why haven't the Romulans freaked out every time they've seen Data? Because it's not just the Jacques Vache that uh, hates cybernetics that supposedly, you know, that's kind of gone into full-blown Romulan culture. So shouldn't they, like, freak out every time they see Data or have this look of disgust? And I remember there was an episode from the third season called The Defector, and it's about that Romulan general who, you know, is like, hey, they're they're planning this whole big thing, and then it turns out the Romans were totally just setting him up to, you know, kind of go away in, in failure and everything. But he has a ton of scenes with Data. First, they're in 10 forward together. And the guy says, so, you're the famous uh, Noonien Sun positronic bearing android. He's like, I can think of a dozen Romulan cybernetic cyberneticists that would love to be this close to you. And it's like, eh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. but it's like, yeah, you help me out with that. And uh, and then yeah, it's just it, the you know or, or even first further unification, you know. I mean, Data's there with Spock and everything, and Sela. How come Sela's not freaking out? And I know she's human originally, but like, you know, she grew up in this Romulan culture. Why doesn't she have this like disgust for for Data? I don't know, or fear. I mean, that's what that's what um, uh, Hazel, the Romulan that's you know helping Picard, that she explains the Jacques Fosh. Hazel, you know, yeah. like Flo. <laughs> she is. Well, you know, Hazel, Hazel was the Baxter's maid, and she's kind of right, like right. Picard's maid and everything. Um, I like them. I like them a lot. But, yeah, so, you know, when she was explaining the whole Jacques Vosch thing, you know, I, I don't know. I'm like, again, I'm like, that's so that's a real problem with me with the Romulans, that and that their computers are just that basic, that they're only, like you said, like abacuses or anything. It's like, wait a minute, even in Enterprise, we had that drone that uh, the Romulans were controlling, that... Uh, Malcolm and um, Trip are on, and it's and it's a it's a full on you know ship drone ship, and it's like well, wait a minute that's got to have some computers in it to be able to do what it's doing. I I have some thoughts. First of all, I think you're allowed to be nitpicky enough if you remember all of those other episodes that the Romulans were in <laughs> right. with, with with all the cybernetic stuff. So you're allowed to be nitpicky. Uh, second of all, maybe um, they retconned. Uh, everything. <laughs> well, yeah, or, 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 or they just honestly, or they're just not digging deep enough to care, right. or or not to care, but just go, well, you know, whatever. We're we're yeah, I mean, we're just changing it to tell a new story, and I mean, again, not the first time that's happened in Star Trek history. I get it, but it's or, like you know, yeah. Or my my last thing that I was going to say, which is totally stupid, but she, um, the you know. Um, Hazel, <laughs> she she does make a point of saying like you know, and and her male counterpart there is like you know, ghost stories. Nobody believed in that stuff, right? Right. You know, may, maybe it's that that you know they don't the, the Romulan populace in general doesn't know about it, but that wouldn't explain what you just explained with all all those instances in, in Next Generation, with uh, all the Romulans coming into contact with Data and all that other stuff. I don't but know. that's the only that's the only that's the only argument I can I can maybe put up. But it's not. I told you from the beginning it wasn't a very good argument. <laughs> it was just one that came to mind. No, I get it. I again, I'm, uh, as I'm looking again for these uh, the names of uh, everybody. Um, what did you think? I mean, we can move on to, to episode yeah. three, I guess. Well, and the other quick thing about Romulans and androids. Let's not forget Nemesis. I mean, the whole plot of that movie was, you know, and I grant the end of the, the Remans, but the Remans are basically the Romulan slave. You know, I mean, they're, they are like blood kin to the Romulans, I believe. And, you know, the Remans planted B4 for uh, the Enterprise to find and everything. Right. So it's like, again, it's like, uh, I'm sorry. There's like big, there's like big Romulan stories that you clearly are ignoring or, or weren't aware of and didn't do deep enough research to go, oh, maybe this is wrong. I don't it's, know if it's necessary yet. I mean, uh, we'll see as it develops, I suppose. 
how necessary it is for the Romulans to hate artificial intelligence. I mean, it also flies in the face of why are they fucking with the Borg if they have this hatred, you know? I don't know. It fills me with a sense of purpose and pride that that these (laughs) Romulans are all Italian, you know, because they're Romulus and Remus. Um, well, that's true. Well, and also even, uh, you know, secret agent Rizzo is, uh, hey, how you doing? I'm Rizzo. Hey, oh, I'm Kinnicky. I'm exactly. Agent Kinnicky. Exactly. I'm Stockyard Channing. How you doing? <laughs> you know, I, what the hell's going on? Jesus. I know we got nothing but I got nothing but great nicknames for everybody because also uh, Captain Rios, his name is uh, Crystal Ball. And I think we have to call him Crystal Balls uh, from now on. <laughs> oh. Jeez. So I, I like him, by the way. I got no problem with him. As what, Han Solo? Character. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or uh, Poe Dam- really Poe Dameron. Not even right. Han Solo, really. He's Poe Dameron, for God's sake. But right. it's fine. It's cool. And I like his EM- I like his Irish EM- EMH. Oh, Fanta Begara. <laughs> yeah, what's that all about? I, I don't know. Is, it, is it his alternate, like, personality sex slave there? What's going on there? Why, well, why does he have the Irish accent? What's up? What's yeah, up? it's I don't know. I guess now in, you know, 25 years post uh, Voyager, you can kind of select your EMH to have a specific ethnicity, which I'm, I'm, I'm fine it's, with. I feel bad for Robert Alexa Picardo. with a different accent. <laughs> yeah. So, and I had heard that Robert Picardo might be in season two. And that, that'll, I would love to see much like when Andy Dick was a different EMH. On uh, Voyager, I, I'm okay with the Irish guy having a conversation with Robert Picardo. That'd be cool. Yeah. So I hope I hope that happens. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like, like them. They're cool. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm I, no. I was gonna go back to the top and everything. So we get uh, another look at the the Mars explosion, and we meet Raffi, who we met briefly at the end of uh, the second episode, right. and we get her backstory, and we see that she was essentially. Picard's first officer, and was you know going to you know the relocation of the Romulan Armada evacuation. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was mm-hmm. going to be kind of the point person, was gathering all the shit that you know needed to be put together. Also, I like that she's Raffi. So, and you know, in her post uh, Starfleet career, she was picked up the acoustic guitar and started singing, you know, row, row, row. Yeah. And yeah, and she's <laughs> hey, Raffi. she's uh, vaping some of the guns or hey, something there. What's wah, that um, wah, um, wah, um, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> man. I know. She's in the back there with the vape. <laughs> that, I know. That's like 21st century Starbuck, like both the original Battlestar and uh, the Ron Moore Battlestar in terms of yeah, gotta have the gotta have the hot shot pilot, and as opposed to sm- soaking a cigar, vaping, I guess is. <laughs> The modern day equivalent and vaping ganj dragon dragon leaf is what she calls it. I haven't oh, seen that strain yet at the dispensary. That. Yeah, exactly. I'd like so, I'd like a pound of dragon leaf, please. Man, <laughs> oh, do you think man. that's what they did? Is like they're like, okay, we're gonna do the, this Picard series, but we're gonna we're gonna steal all these other characters, basically these character traits from other sci fi. Um, series like totally. Starbuck and Poe. <laughs> yeah, and well, and also, really, I mean, the whole artificial, you know, replicants going crazy plot. It's like, okay, there's Blade Runner, there's uh, this, you know, bat, both bat, Battlestar Galacticus, but more the Ron Moore version and stuff. And it's like, okay, I, you know, I, I don't mind. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Renegade Robots is nothing new. Right. Uh, and that's okay, but like, show me something different with them. And I'm still trying to figure out. Um, what the Romulans are doing? All right, so the Romulans are in charge of this Borg resurrection thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems that way. But then Hugh is in charge of the cube. Did they bring back Hugh, and we see him for the yeah. first time in twenty five years, and that's cool. And I love I love his makeup, and I love that he's got the you know, messed up fake eye where where his uh, Borg implant used to be and everything, and that his face has yeah, I heavy, was, I, heavy duty pockmarks from uh, all the implants and everything. I was feeling a little self-conscious, like which eye I should watch and follow when he was talking. But that's, you know, because sure. one of them wasn't there. Well, yeah, it's the right, the right eye seems to be the humanoid eye. I'm not sure if technically Hugh is supposed to be human or not. And I like his whole speech on... Uh, the XBs are like the most, you know, least respected race in the in the galaxy or whatever. Um, the uh, and obviously XBs, X Borg, but yeah, it's very it's very confusing because he's in charge of the facility and still has to deal with Romulans, who you know, like the security guys were kind of hassling him and uh, 
Soji when Soji was going to go talk to right. uh, Ramada. Now the vault, the that, vault, or the Romulan mystic. Now that's one of the things that stood out to me was because now these were all Romulans that were reclaimed in this yes. area. Yes, and and they've all gone a little um, crazy. Yes, or and something. Also, they were the last race to be assimilated by the Borg cube. By that cube, right before it got disconnected from the collective and or whatever. Right. So, so yeah, and then yeah, they're the, all nuts. But is there some sort of connection between all of them still? Seems to be. Or, yeah, right. I'm not sure. We don't know yet. Because, again, they were all – you know, one guy's doing the Romulan Rubik's Cube. Nice to see that the Rubik's yeah. Cube's made it across the galaxy and survived <laughs> hundred years, hundreds of years later. <laughs> um, well, one of the reasons I, I do this podcast with you is because I want to know these answers, and yet you have none until no, no, after the episode sorry. airs. So what I, good are you? I know. I'm sorry. Well, all I can do is tell you what I know from – uh, previous episodes or whatever. Oh, by the way, Raffi has a big part in that IDW prequel comic uh, where it is this adventure before they try to, you know, start evacuating Romulus and stuff. And, and it's it's good. It's consistent. And I and I I, I like her as a character. She's all right. You yeah, know? well, they're all they're all pretty new. Um, so I don't know who I like and who I don't like yet, but I seem to generally like all of them so just, far. Again, a little heavy-handed writing, a little over-dramatic at, at points. I mean, you know, just just go. I found you a yeah. captain. Now go. Right. It's like, all right. Like, relax. we couldn't tell two scenes later she was going to show up again. Yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, yeah. guess what? We've already seen the clips. We know you're still on the show. Thanks anyway. Very, very <laughs> dramatic. Very, very good. Why don't you go back, back to vaping? I still can't stand that, uh, what's her name, Allison Pill? That's the one I know I don't like. <laughs> Agonist. Ag- Agnes, yeah, Agnes. Ag- yeah. I like calling her Agnes. I know. Uh, I, I that's don't like, know. But... That's a Barney Miller reference. That was Inspector Luger's girlfriend, Agnes. <laughs> Inspector Luger, See, that's you right. Gotta, you got to lean on the G, Agnes. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm saying, like, and, and, and like I said, Crystal Ball's uh, Rios instead of Crystal Ball. So, yeah, she comes in at the end, and and and, uh, but she had met with uh, Commodore O. The Commodore O, yeah. And, and and she's she came in she came on a little too CIA spy men in black with those shades on. You're you're telling me that in the future, after all these advances in in scientific technological advances, that they couldn't come up with a better sunglass. Foster look? Grants. Foster <laughs> Grants exists in the 24th century as well. Nope. She looked like she got those out of the 80s. <laughs> And they will be again. That's the beauty of it. That's like in Star Trek, uh, in Star Trek Four, when Kirk's selling his glasses. Weren't those a gift from Doctor McCoy? And they will be again. That's the beauty of time travel. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I, I, well, I'll be honest. Now she enters. You know, they have the big Tal Shiar attack on uh, Chateau Picard, and uh, Hazel and uh, Alfred uh, Romulans are able to, uh, you know, defend uh, defend Picard admirably. I like them. I really do. They grow on me. Every episode, I, I like them that much more. So I give them credit. But yeah, I mean, come on. It is Hazel and Alfred. Come on. Right. Uh, or, uh, or Mrs. Garrett. Why, why, why? What? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to space, Mrs. Garrett. What? No. <laughs> So it's dangerous uh, out there. What's out there? It's dangerous out there. You can't go out there. Exactly. Oh god. And also, again, he's ninety-two supposedly on this show. Sec uh, you know, first episode he gets blown up and thrown a good fifty yards and walks that off. Hey, where was I? Oh, you got blown up. Well, I'm much better now. Yeah. And then <laughs> this one, the Tal Shiar throw him around the room. And again, it's like he's ninety two. He, yeah. he did fight back, and that's good. And honestly, he didn't. He wasn't like. But he didn't and, overdo it, which I like. Right. I was going to yeah. say he wasn't Sean Connery in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah. And God bless Sean. I love Sean Connery, and I love that he can still throw a great right cross. But also, Sean Connery's like a mountain of a man. You know, Patrick Stewart's kind of a wiry little guy, and he, I'm sure shrinking as as time continues. So yeah, I mean, it's it's just again, man, they're like whipping him around the building. <laughs> Jesus. So, ow. I think I broke something. No, no, no. It's the 24th century. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Um, Can I, I have I, that bone reconstituted, please? Exactly. Nip my bones. Will you please, Hazel? <laughs> right away, Mr. B. Um, yeah, I'll I don't know. Get you a glass of wine. 
Exactly. Well, how about how about Raffi, man? So she's toking and drinking wine. She's like yeah, she, she's like she's like hard hitting that one. Computer, please run Wizard of Oz with the Dark Side of the Moon soundtrack playing simultaneously, please. You're blowing my mind. I love that uh, he says you're reviewing the information. I'll send you everything I have. <laughs> yeah, she's like, wait a minute, I don't want to. Uh, whatever. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, but I was going to say about Allison Pill show, agonists uh, showing up. Now she shoots that last Tal Shiar. How did she get that gun? And I mean, well, like one of them dropped it or something like that. Oh yeah, maybe that's there. the case. Maybe they dropped it. I don't know. But because yeah, um, uh, Hazel makes. <laughs> then you got me calling her See? Hazel. You got um, Hazel. Hazel makes the uh, the comment that there there is no stun on Ron, Romulan right. weapons. Right. Yeah. So she picked that up from from one of the one of the the guys that got beat up and dropped stuff. Okay. All right. I mean, <laughs> you didn't catch like, that. I thought. I thought so. No. I, I, I guess. I suppose. Um, I want to give. <laughs> I want to be nice and actually call Hazel and Alfred by their proper names. Uh, it's Laris. Uh, is uh, by Orla Brady is the is the actor, and then who plays? What's their characters' names? Uh, it's Laris. Laris. Oh. Okay. Laris is Hazel, and where's the guy? I'm still going to go with Hazel and Alfred. Oh, totally. Well, like I said, and I'm going to go with uh, Crystal Balls uh, Rios. Um, I can't find him. I can't. I can't. I can't find the guy. Um, but in any case, uh, no, I do like them, and yeah, I, I believe in Lars and everything. I, I'm wondering if Agonist is going to like end up being a, like a plant, and then going to switch around at some point because I, I for being as oh my god i'm a scatterbrain i don't know what i was doing but i just shot a tell she i'm like yeah i don't know yeah. we'll see we'll see i don't know because we don't have we're not privy to the conversation that her and uh commodore, o, o. commodore o had that's true yeah well maybe, and yeah you're right maybe about Johnson that pill has got a pair of sunglasses she's not showing that could be yeah yeah it's mm-hmm. possible and then all right and i wanted to go back to to uh as i call him romulan spock narrick yeah, and, and uh, her his uh, sister Rizzo. Sister, yeah, we found out their sister brother. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I and maybe I'm not sister wife brother. My my wild hair theory, and it's funny because I was looking to see if anyone else online who was reviewing the episodes had had this as well. And I think it was BuzzFeed's YouTube might have had. I know it was only one place where I heard somebody say this as well. Where oh my brother died. Oh man, I'm really bummed out about my brother. We lost my brother, and then all of a sudden his sister shows up. I'm wondering if beyond being uh, Romulan posing as a human, that it's Romulan male posing as human female, and that it's not only a trans alien but also transsexual uh, character. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I it was interesting how man those ears must be made out of play doh. Because I don't know how they get from tiny human ears to suddenly she's pointy-eared. Because when she's Romulan, Rizzo's uh, ears are pointier and bigger than they are when they're human. And you would think that they would have to be bigger human and then pair them down to be Romulan again. They should have given her, like, big Crosby earrings or, ears or something like that. You know, big big giant ears. Big old man, yeah. 90-year-old ears. With the lobes hanging down. Exactly. Yeah. With with wobbly lobes. Exactly. <laughs> totally. That's like, you know, because really, like, her her Romulan ears are bigger. I mean, I, I'm interested now. I want to know the cosmetic uh, surgery involved in turning her human and to Romulan to human and then back to Romulan again. Because like, I think those ears grew a little bit. There. Well, they they did that a couple of times, didn't they? On, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, with Picard oh, and those guys. Well, yeah. even back to Kirk. There's that original series episode in the third season when Kirk... Uh, uh, McCoy makes Kirk look like a Romulan so he can go on the Romulan ship and steal the cloaking device. Right, right, right. Yeah. So there's that, and then there's uh, Troy got captured and made into looking like a Tal Shiar, and uh, uh, what's her face on uh, Deep Space Nine? Uh, Kira. Kira was made to believe that she was always a Cardassian sleeper agent. Mm-hmm. And there was that episode. Um, oh, no, there's been even Enterprise episodes where Archer... Uh, and other crew members are made to look like other aliens and stuff. So that's nothing new. Right. But I, I wonder if they put the extra spin on it, and that's going to be the, what a twist, that not only is Rizzo Romulan, but also really a Romulan male. Oh, my gosh. How about it? It's possible. Little little weird kind of creepy uh, brother-sister kind of sex stuff between Rizzo and Narek, I think. 
Yeah, maybe they're on a Discovery or TLC, like, you know, brother-sister-wife show that they're filming secretly. <laughs> Can besides I the Picard. <laughs> Can I kill my brother? 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 I don't um, know. I liked when that first shot when we come into the board cube that they go through the different sections because there's obviously a whole bunch of stuff going on on that ship. Right. Yes. That's true. That's very true. Well, and, I, and also to confuse me that there's there's the Borg that they're resurrecting, and they call them the Nameless, and I, and it's like and then she speaks to the Nameless in their own language as Hugh observes. And I'm like, I thought that was like they didn't know what the race was. I'm a, I, I'm gonna have to go back to again to that second episode and understand the the, the explanation of the nameless because I thought she spoke. I'm assuming she spoke Romulan to them. I don't know that one yeah. that one thing, and that's why Hugh or whatever. Um, I like Hugh. I like Hugh in it. I like what he's doing. I like that. Um, I I'm, I'm just still not. I'm not. Uh, clear on who owns this cube. It seems to be the Romulan's property, but why is Hugh in charge of the cube and not a Romulan? I, I, again, I don't understand these political dynamics. Well, I don't know if he's in charge of of the cube. I think he's in charge of those sections like that are holding some of these reclaimed. I guess I don't know. I, I got to watch the episode again. To, yeah, to fully well, that's get why it, it's like okay, that's not that's not very clear. And again, is it so? It, well, and I, I guess this is part of the whole big conspiracy. Does the Federation know that the cube is out there and that the Romulans are working around with it? Is it just this conspiratorial subsection that Commander O, Commodore O, seems to be in charge of? Because clearly, the, the Admiral doesn't know that's going on. Right. I mean, she's she's trusting Admiral Clancy. Go fuck yourself, Picard. Uh, she uh, she you know yeah. When she talks to Commodore O and stuff, it seems to all be above board, regular Starfleet business. Of hey, he's got this weird uh, you know theory that there's Romulan stuff going on. I just want to double check and make sure that it as crazy as it sounds, it may not be true. Yeah, I'll get to the bottom of this, Admiral. Not really. Let me twist. Let me twirl my mustache. Not in your face, Admiral. But uh, yeah. As soon as, as soon as I stop talking to you, Mwah, ah, ah. Uh, so yeah, I'm very. I, I I want a better understanding of who is uh, like in charge of that cube, and who knows it. So it's very very weird. I like I like how Soji when she was freaking out after um, um, Mystic Romulan uh, totally like freak Ram, uh, Ramada. Uh, or Ramda freaks out on her that she calls her mom and that she's soothed by her mom's, you know, BS and, you know, hey, how's Dodge doing? Oh, Dodge is fine. She's thinking about getting she's a fine. puppy. Anyway, she's I, still alive. Why would I, you think she's dead? Exactly. Yeah. And also, yeah, I took the car in for uh, an oil job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she just, I, I really like that. It's it's metaphorical of, yeah, listen, I don't need to know this uh, min, min, minutia of the family. That's okay. I'm going to fall asleep now. <laughs> but, yeah, why did she pass out though? Well, I think it was almost a like a sub uh, conscious, uh, like positronic kind of message of you don't have to worry about that. Relax, sleep, right. sleep. Yeah. So or, that's, or was that's it something? Because then the Romulan guy came in right after that, and did did he put them to sleep? Did he put her to sleep? Or no, probably not. It was the mom. Oh, I think it was the mom. Yeah, right? yeah the I really mom used, message, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, I think it was the control. But again, who's manipulating that? You know, right. it's. You know, there's uh, there's some interesting questions in everything. Or is um, there even really a mom? Well, that's yeah. Or is that another sub program? Sure, absolutely. Oh, this all just got freaky, Johnny. You're freaking me out, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I no, and I mean again, Rizzo and uh, Narek being a little weird. Uh, <laughs> hey, I think you look a little close to me here, brother, sister. <laughs> if you are my sister. Can you be my brother, brother, brother? I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, whatever. Of course, and you knew it was going to end with engage. You knew it was going to end with oh, Picard absolutely. saying engage. You know, that's fine. I'm cool with that. I like I the. Like, I like I, that Rafi calls him JL. Yes, I do too. <laughs> and I want to know where that came from. Well, it's in the because that's in the comic as well. So that like, and as they said in the flashback scene at Starfleet and stuff, 14 years earlier. Um, so yeah, clearly, you know, she was his uh, first officer back then, or some sort of attaché or whatever, whatever his mm. role was as an admiral. He has a different ship 
in the countdown com- the countdown Picard IDW comic book, and she is this first officer there. So, oh, yeah, well, there you go. yeah. But I like I do kind of like how after you know that she's the one that also had to based on Picard not coming up with a different solution to the Romulan. Uh, you know, a, a excavation or whatever, or evacuation. Yeah, they they called his bluff. <laughs> yes. Well, and also screwed her over too, Raffi. Right. So, you ruined me. Now I got to live in this stupid RV in the middle of nowhere that looks a lot like the blo- the world that the Gorn and Kirk fought on. But that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> that is get, cool that they use that location again. I get, love that location. Getting drunk and high all the time. Exactly. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> hey, thanks for the Chateau Picard, man. That's going to go well with my strain of dragon leaf. Vaping. Boy, she's vaping all over the place. And then she's yeah. vaping when she's looking up the information. Free cloud. Yeah. What is so, that? It sounds like an AOL scam to me. I don't know. It's, 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 it sounds like her dispensary where she gets all her, all her stuff. Exactly. Welcome to free cloud. I'm out of a dragon leaf. But we have edibles if you want. We've got Romulan ale that's infused. Hey, excellent. Give me that, please. <laughs> Too much. I'm digging it. Um, I like her. I like her RV. I like her her uh, futuristic RV. Or yeah, <laughs> whatever it is where she's living. Her trailer in, in the Shenandoah Valley. There. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. No, that's great, man. Um, and I like. She's in the, uh, like, like, the outbacks of Arizona or something. I don't. That's you know that is. I actually I think that is a Southern California location or whatever because I know. As they've said before, there's like been a ton of both the movies and episodes that have been shot there to make it look like an alien world. And it's like, well, yeah, with all that crazy rocks and everything. It's cool. I like it. What else? There's no mythology in, in Romulan. They don't have abacuses. I mean, they only use abacuses and they don't have mythology. Well, no, she just yeah. said she hated the word with mythology. But yeah, right. that, that whole mystic, uh, you know. What did she call it though? She called it the muse or something. No, 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 she said. I thought she meant news, like news. You know, actually news. That as uh, Soji explained it, uh, that yeah, it's this like a way to infuse legend with and have a historical narrative that fits in today today's world as well. I don't know, but she's uh, got her flashcards out. I know that her tarot cards, her Romulan tarot cards. No, the, the thing destroyer. That- Right, but the thing that um, confuses me a little bit is like the, the Romulan super double secret probation guys. The Jacquevash. Yeah, they're they're attacking Picard and and all these other things. But you know, he asked that guy, "Where is she?" And he says that she she's something different or something like she doesn't even know what she is or whatever. But when we find her. Um, and then the Romulan on the board cube says she doesn't even know what she is yet. Right. So do the do the double secret probation guys actually know where she is, or these guys don't work for them? Well, again, yeah, that's kind of the question. Is I think clearly she was put there uh, by the Jat Vash. Well, or I'm assuming the Jat Vash are controlling the board cube in some way. I, well, but then again, that flies in the face of if they actually hate cybernetics and AI and everything. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, is it the Tal Shiar? I mean, the Tal Shiar are clearly... I mean, they keep being calling them that, that it's the Tal Shiar that is uh, after her and the Borg Cube, so I don't know if there's a plot within the Tal Shiar that are Jat Vash. I mean, even, yeah, Picard is even saying that, too. I, I don't or they're making know. too big of a deal of all these Romulans not liking technology or synth life, and th- this is... Soj or or Dash are synth life that are Romulan? Well, that's I think that there must be some sort of Romulan DNA in Soji as well, because maybe that's how she's able to communicate with Ramada or Ramda. Uh Ramada. I'm gonna call it Ramada Ramada, as a hotel. Exactly. (laughs) The Ramada Inn. Uh but yeah, I I mean I'm assuming I'm assuming there's gotta be some sort of symbiotic connection. And then that's how. And again, she said she knew her from tomorrow. So yeah. kinda, you know, she because of her mind, she has no concept of time, either past or present or future, or it's all melted together in her brain. Or is she a time traveler? Maybe I don't know. I don't know why not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not for sure. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I obviously what this. Uh, you know. Um, 
what was it called again? Not free space. What was it called? Free, free, ring free, ring free, run, fingering, fingering yes. printing. No. Yeah, yeah, sure. Free cloud. Free cloud. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I get confused because when she was looking at, <laughs> she was looking at her computer, it said finger printing. And, and I'm like, what did that say? Fingering? Like, like I mashed the two words together. And I'm like, that can't be a Star Trek. Yeah, I don't one. think that's it. <laughs> I think you have to pay 20 bucks more to get fingering. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, and again, we'll find out, I suppose. And obviously, we'll get a couple more crewmates. We'll get the guy with the sword. I need yeah, your sword. Cool. What? He looks cool. He's like a Highlander. <laughs> he is like a Highlander. He looks like either a Vulcan or Romulan Highlander. So they pull so. they pull Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica and Poe from Star. Now they got Highlander. They're they got pulling. Highlander in there, absolutely. <laughs> and so I what, guess you know Agonis is basically Baltar from uh, from uh, Galactica. Agonis. Agonis. Um, oh, you know it's great. I was watching. <laughs> I don't know if other people have been watching the uh, After Treks this season. Uh, Will Wheaton is uh, the host of it, and. <laughs> uh, and oh, and they had uh, they had the the woman that uh, directed the first the pilot episode and uh, Michael Chabon, and uh, they were talking about uh, number one the dog the pit bull, and she's like yeah I don't know if I mentioned this in the last episode but she's like yeah we uh, we decided we can't show him as much because he's not a great actor and kept screwing up the shots so they go <laughs> there were a lot of more plans to show a lot more of number one in the show but he he wasn't a great he, she's like great dog just not, not a great actor so. <laughs> So that's kind of why we didn't see as much of number one. Oh, there's going to be number one, a dog. Oh, very excited about that. That's a big cause of mine right now. Cool. And he got okay. fired. Yep. Oh, or yes. whatever. Just his role got minimized. So that made me laugh. Kind of like uh, the woman that was on the West Wing in the first season that uh, didn't make the cut afterwards. Maura Kelly's uh, character. Ah. Uh-huh. But I oh, yeah, that's right. My streams. Yeah. All right. Good. I know. I'm glad you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. So, I yeah, do I'll, remember her vaguely now, and I'm like, yeah, what happened to her? Yeah, she just, yeah, nah, too, we don't care about her storyline. She's gone. Same with number one. See you later. Good or news. On, uh, you're on, going to live with Maura Kelly now. What? Yeah. Or on Roseanne when they suddenly changed orders and didn't acknowledge it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They did have a line in there, though, which I thought was very clever. It's like, you look different, you know? But oh, other true. than that, they didn't that. acknowledge that she was a different person. That's funny. <laughs> Um, but I'm still in, in in general. I'm still liking the show. Fine. Um, yes. You know it's it, it's interesting. I like where it's going. Um, you know. Let's talk more about uh, Crystal Balls uh, Rios for a second. <laughs> um, Crystal Ball, Chris Rios. I like him. I think he's interesting. Um, uh, you know, it kind of cracked me up when uh, Picard is like, look at the way you keep your ship. Yes, I know you've got a blade in your shoulder, but you are clearly Starfleet. Starfleet, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. I I sense the crew cut behind your long bangs and unshaved face. I can see you coming a mile away. Yeah. It's like, all right. <laughs> it's, again, this is that ham-fisted writing, man, where I'm just yeah. like, yeah, all right, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and don't forget me. Well, he's, always, he, always after me, lucky charms. I'm the EMH. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was very excited. Picard was very excited. It was like um, the, the closest you get to uh, being excited at that age nowadays. Yeah, I, I suppose. I don't know. And again, <laughs> well, and it's just Raffi, and and I guess she kind of explained in the in the flashback too that she's got this like almost encyclopedic knowledge of other. Uh, off, off former officers that you can like get a hold of and stuff. So that does that didn't surprise me. And obviously, again, this is somebody that's on the outs of Starfleet. They they allude to Rios's former captain who died in his arms or whatever. Um, you know, they you, when he's having that conversation with the EMH, and uh, oh, yeah. you know, Laddie, yeah, you seem down. His blood and brains were all over the bulkhead. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> <laughs> That must, that must have been a hell of a hit. <laughs> so I'm, I'm counting on a, a flashback scene coming up uh, explaining why Rios uh, left Starfleet in some fashion. So, um, But i got to say, for the most part, I'm, I'm liking the flashbacks. I think they're informative. And, um, you know, uh, I think we're getting a decent understanding of these characters. I think from the 
teasers for next week. We're understanding uh, Highlander uh, Swordsman that's coming up and everything, and it looks like there's a flashback to when he's a little boy, and Picard is like teaching him how to sword fight or whatever, or fence, in some fashion. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's just an extrapolation of that quick little teaser, but that's my guess. Um, no, I don't, you know, again, I, I, I'm, I'm intrigued enough to find out more about these characters and like, all right, let's see what they go. Even Agonis. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like her. <laughs> well, that's surprising. Cause I got to tell you, I hated her on the newsroom. Alice well, that's, Pilgrim. that's where my hate comes from. I understand. But, but then again, she was great on Scott Pilgrim. Mm-hmm. I, I liked her there. And, um, where else have I seen her where I liked her? Um, um, oh, God, what did I just see? And she was in it. There was some weird uh, movie with um, with Frodo. Uh, wasn't it Frodo? Yeah, Elijah Wood. Um, and she's like the love interest in that. I think it was Cooties, like a horror movie from somewhere around the Scott Pilgrim era or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also, I really like her in Midnight in Paris, the Woody Allen movie with... Um, Owen Wilson, where she's, wow. Zelda, she's Zelda Fitzgerald. And she oh. was funny. I thought she was a good Zelda Fitzgerald. I, I thought that was a very good uh, part for her. So, hmm. I don't know. You know, 20s party twenties party girl is a little nuts. Yeah, I don't know. So we'll see. Agonis. She's very big yeah. in robotics. You have to take her. I guess so. so. And I'm really, really hoping that Bruce Maddox is played by the same guy. Because, I mean, and they're doing a great job bringing back Hugh, and I loved back in the Deep Space Nine years when they did the uh, the Trouble with Tribbles uh, episode, and they got the guy who was, uh, you know, the Romulan that was the human. And by the way, there's another example of, uh, of uh, you know, former aliens changing uh, races and stuff, or, yeah, I guess races. Races. Mm-hmm. So, Mr. Mr. Darwin? I want to say it was uh, from Trials and Tribulations and uh, Trouble with Tribbles. Uh, I'd have to take your word for it. He was the Klingon that uh, was actually, you know, was posing as the human. Right. Back in that original episode, and then they brought him back. That was cool. It was the same actor. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I really want it to be Bruce Maddox. I rewatched The Measure of a Man, uh, the second season episode with the first time we see Bruce Maddox and uh, the whole trial the one data's on trial and they Starfleet tries to claim him as property mm-hmm. and stuff. And the other thing too that I wanted to mention was, anyway, I keep coming up with more stuff. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like Robert Nett and, and a lot of other people like, you know, it's kind of disappointing that the Federation is all of a sudden xenophobic or whatever. And is, you know, not as goodwill oriented as, as they've always been portrayed to be. You go back to um, undiscovered country and even though it wasn't the entirety of Starfleet, you basically had this group of admirals that were xenophobic and are like, no, we don't want to. In much in the same scenario as what we're dealing with with the Romulans in Picard, it's like 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 Kirk says, let them die. You right. know, it's like I don't want them. I don't want to save them. And it's fine, Jim. They're dying. And it's like yeah, I don't care. Ugh. And it's God. It's Captain Kirk saying that stuff. So initially, well, uh, yeah, but. He had very personal reasons. I understand. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but, but you know something? I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back because he's always been antagonistic with the Klingons. And he, you know, he's always been ready to fight them more so than save them, with the exception of that uh, episode, even with Kang, Day of the Dove. We have no need of aliens telling us to hate humans. I don't know. The only one he played with was. Captain Koloth from Trouble with Trill- Trill- Tribbles, because, uh, you know, they kind of were just kind of doing a little dance with each other, more so than, like, I will kill you, Kirk. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I... I, I, I it They're Klingons. Have... You can't trust them. Well, exactly. And then, uh, but, uh, but but back to the, the Romulan thing, yeah, so, or, or even in Deep Space Nine, where Robert Foxworthy's uh, Admiral character, you know, is is doing the secret plot to kind of create martial law on, on Earth because of the dominion and the fear of the changelings and everything. So there there've always been xenophobic ideas 
within the Federation and within Starfleet. So, as much as the majority, you know, uh, rule would prevail of, no, we're going to be good and goodwill, it doesn't seem like those human feelings ever die. And I, I again, this is kind of, it flies in the face of Roddenberry's theory of, hey, you know, by the 23rd century, Earth has its shit together, and we don't hate it anymore. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Any other thoughts on all that? Mm. No. I was thinking. I was thinking that you know, uh, yeah. Well, that's what I was saying in the first episode type thing is that um, you know Picard was standing up for the for the uh, basic foundation or tenets of Starfleet. Yeah, totally. And, and uh, it's not Starfleet anymore, but. I had that feeling while watching Discovery, too. So. Well, and yeah, so. and again, that's the way they're writing it and everything. No, I understand that. Well, and again, that's why, going back to Measure of a Man, um, a lot of what he was arguing with Clancy with is absolutely in that episode. It is part of his defensive data to uh, the judge, in that Jag judge in that hearing about data being property or not. I mean, you can all those arguments you could apply to the Romulans. In terms of, aren't we supposed to be this? Aren't we supposed to be that? Aren't we supposed to help or recognize new life forms? And, and I know the Romulans aren't a new life form. But a lot a lot of the arguments in Picard are in this episode of Measure of the Man. And I'm sure all of you that are watching this as intently as we are and everything. I mean, Frank, Franco hasn't gone back to watch it. But I would I would imagine you already have. And you, you likely see a lot of those strings. I'm looking forward to the eventual encounter with Bruce Maddox. And we hear what he's been doing for the last 14 years since the synths went illegal or were deemed illegal. Right. But, but, you know, yeah, it's weird. I mean, even the way Raffi says it, and it's like, it's not like, you know, these are a bunch of synths. I, well, and also the whole synth, more so than the Romulans, excuse me, the more I think about it, the arguments that uh, Picard makes for Data are the same arguments you can make for the synths, too. And to, and, or even yeah. more so, there's a conversation with Guinan where she fears that if uh, making data commonplace could result in a slave labor uh, group. And as right. she's describing it, she never uses the word. And finally, Picard says, Slaver- you're talking about slavery. And right. she's like, well, you know, no. It's, and, and she's just giving a devil's advocate uh, argument, saying, no, no, no. It could be completely different. He's like, no, it's not. I realize that now. Talking to you, I get what you're saying. And it kind of, you know, reinforces his belief of I've got to defend data because if Maddox is allowed to do this, this could happen. Well, it did. Mm -hmm. It did happen. And obviously you did have this kind of, you know, the synths aren't as um, aware as data is, but they are treated like this slave race. So, yeah, if you haven't watched Measure of a Man, you should really do it because it really does. I, I it clearly they have watched Measure of a Man to call him back. So there should be some good, interesting, hopefully, philosophical conversations about this whole question of what the synths represent. I don't know, Johnny. Okay, another thing about Raffi. Um, I like at the end where she's like, well, I'm not, I'm not joining your crew. I'll go with you to Free Cloud. And that reminded me of the original movie. Because remember, Spock really was just like, I want to go investigate this V'ger thing but not for the same reason that the Federation does. I have my own reasons and everything, right? Right. And what were those reasons? Well, V'ger spoke to him while he was getting the uh, Kolinar on uh, Vulcan, and he was about to go full full logic, and all of a sudden he sensed V'ger. Right. I mean, he, he, makes the whole, he makes the whole explanation when he, McCoy, and Kirk are having their first real private conversation. Would you please sit down? <laughs> and then he and then he goes he goes through his on Vulcan I sense to you know mm-hmm. whatever a life form or whatever um, so yeah obviously Raffi saw something in Free Cloud that had you know triggered some something with her likely something that hasn't been teased yet but there's something but yeah she's she's going but do you think her. do you think these these uh, Dash and and whatever. Okay. Soji, yeah. um, well, specifically Dash, she went to go seek out Picard. Right. And is there something implanted in her by Maddox or something else to go to Picard? 
Yeah, I would think so. Because or, she or, was in yeah. because she was in danger at the moment, and is that going to happen to Soji? Yeah, yeah. Well, and again, that's why it was interesting when um, the Romulan attacked her, when uh, Ramada attacked her. Uh, yeah, that she didn't have flash to Picard. Instead, she flashed to her mother. I don't know. I mean, it, I imagine it will eventually happen, but I'm not sure. You know, we'll see when, and maybe Hugh will be the one, you know, maybe Hugh's, I, again, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I would imagine some sort of programming will awaken in her to trust Picard eventually. But does she have to be in danger? Because that's what happened with Dosh. Right, right. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm I mean, so we, don't know, we don't know how Picard is going to, and his crew are going to get from where they're going now to Free Cloud to, you know, having the information about the Borg Cube. I assume that they're going to get that information on Free Cloud or whatever. Free Cloud to me always sounds like it's some online Amazon. service that you want, you yeah. know. Subscribe to Free Cloud today. Apple. Apple iCloud. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Free Cloud. Fant- Does that get bundled with my internet service or do I have to pay extra <laughs> for that? Do I get free Disney streaming with my Verizon? <laughs> yeah, it's part of Disney Plus. <laughs> exactly. Free Cloud. Hey, fantastic. Exactly. Or it's, yeah, with Apple Plus. CBS Apple All TV. Access. Yeah. If you have an Apple TV, you already have Free Cloud. <laughs> but, of course, Raffi doesn't have that because she's out in the desert, you know, in her RV. Well, she's stoned out of her mind. She exactly. doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have Free Cloud? I don't know. All right, man. I thought I had free cloud, but I was just staring at the wallpaper. Tommy Chong is free cloud's like, or is Rafi's uh, guru. Hey, man, who's this Picard dude? He's got great wine, man. I was going to bring Boone's Farm over, but this is much better. And he's got a dog named Number One, and then I watch him do Number One. I was going to say, does he pee all the time, man? Wow. That dog's got a weak bladder. That's why I called him number one. <laughs> He's drinking a lot of wine, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, number one's walking in walls from all the wine. He's lacking up. <laughs> Easy number one. Here's another thing about Hugh that, that confuses me, or really just, again, the structure of the hierarchy of of who owns the Borg Cube and what's going on. Because Soji... I'm assuming for the purposes of most of the Romulan crew is a human that's being allowed to work on this Romulan Borg cube. There's also a Trill. You remember in the second ep- uh, season or the second episode, the new the newcomer that's like, oh, I'm really freaked out or whatever. And she's like, oh, yeah, it's not a big deal. You'll get used to working with Romulans. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. But she was a Trill. So, like, it seems like either officially by these governments or unofficially, the Romulans are welcoming other species to help them with the reclamation of these former Borg. And they are accepting all of these other races, perhaps explained by the fact that, again, they don't, in this current incarnation, the Romulans don't have a lot of cybernetic knowledge. So they need these extra hands with cybernetic knowledge to like kind of, Resurrect these former crew member members. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. You have any thoughts on any of that? No, <laughs> none whatsoever. <laughs> because I have, to, I have no idea where it's going. Um, yeah, I mean, you bring up valid points, but it. I don't know if uh, if if it's what you say or something else. Yeah, because I, I mean, Hugh is clearly impressed with Soji's ability to, you know, again, she's got all this back knowledge of the Romulans that she has studied. Uh, she tries to speak with uh, mystic Romulan Ramada. And then, of course, Narek later is impressed with whatever. And, and obviously, she's crossed the line knowing as much as she does about Romulans that Narek, you know, is, seems to be pissed. Like, how'd you find that information out? Right. But then by the same token, you know... And Hugh is, like, fascinated by how she does know that information. Right, right. Uh-huh. And, and yeah, I mean, she he, he clearly sees her as a, a ex-Borg ally of sorts. So, yeah, I don't know. Very interesting. What else can you say? Nothing. I think we've said everything. And, again, with my nitpicks, don't get me wrong, I'm still enjoying it. Just a little clunky. 
That's all. Yeah, you know. no, but your 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 nitpicks are, are uh, warranted. All right, fair enough. Because fair enough. because uh, yeah, you remember all that stuff from the old series, and uh, I remember it when you bring it up, and uh, I don't necessarily go looking for it, but you can you can recall this stuff. Oh, we try. Know. Um, here uh, did I, I? I've got a, a few more comments. Okay, I'm enjoying the show so far. Mark McGrath, lots of positives. On the negative side, the scene transitions are quite jarring. I guess this is where the ads will go eventually. Not smooth at all. Oh, yeah, and I'm glad he mentioned this. The acid-spitting scenes could have been executed better. I don't mind the acid-spitting scenes. I think they're okay. Um, And I feel like that as an extra weapon. And it made me me laugh when Alfred uh, Romulan uh, just took his coat off and stamped on it. But yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, but I kind of I do kind of like that. I think that's pretty funny. And then Paul Paul Anderson made the observation, looking at Patrick Stewart. Is it just me, or does this look a little bit like Egghead <laughs> from Batman? Oh, come on now! Exquisite. Yes, <laughs> I'm John Luke Picard. It is. Hello. Yeah, the acid spitting stuff is like old style KGB, you know, cyanide yeah. tooth and a false yes. tooth thing. Yeah. No, I, I, I kind of like it. I'm, I'm okay with that. But I also liked how capable Hazel and Alfred were in terms of handling young Tal Shiar. It's like, yeah, we got the training, too. Don't kid yourself. Yeah. And they, they kicked ass in a very good way. Yeah, and I like how uh, Picard has uh, phasers stashed all over the house. <laughs> it's like, it's like every, every, under every table, there's a phaser, apparently. That's true. <laughs> no, you never know when the vineyard's being raided. Right. Why break out the phasers? They're here for the Chateau 92. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am enjoying it more. I'm very excited to see Free Cloud. And uh, we're t- I'm glad we're in space. So let's see what's, what the rest of the galaxy looks like these days. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll see more, I guess, next week. But I, I, it's interesting. I am rewatching the hell out of all these episodes, waiting for the next episode. Uh, because I'm enjoying it so much. And that is something I can't say I was doing with Discovery. Discovery, right, yeah. You know, I mean, really, I mean, I accepted each episode like, all right, whatever, you know, and it's like, I guess I'll keep going because I'm invested in the story, but... Yeah, I'm very excited because they showed the the coming scenes. Now, I don't know if that's for the next episode or eventually episodes, but, you know, we're getting we're getting a Romulan Highlander there. And, uh, Absolutely no. That's I think that is going to be. I think that's happening in Free Cloud or whatever, and also the uh, Romulans only area where they mm-hmm. a bunch of them were sitting around having a picnic of some sort. Mm-hmm. Picnic with Agonis, yeah. With Agonis, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, we'll see, and uh, let's uh, let's hope for more of the Irish uh, EMH. <laughs> <laughs> Laddie, I don't think you like it. No. Oh, I, I took the shrapnel out of your shoulder. I can give you the Notre Dame highlights of last night's game. <laughs> we don't care. Sorry. No, Crystal Balls doesn't care about that. Captain Crystal Balls. So, all right. Well, there you go. Um, be uh, sure to check in next week as we uh, do another uh, rewatch or review well, of... Uh, well, well, engage. <laughs> All right, there you go. Uh, That's uh, our review of Picard Episode 3. We'll be back next weekend with uh, an Episode 4 review. And uh, really, uh, please send your comments uh, to john at wordballoon.com or uh, if you see the post under uh, Twitter or Facebook, uh, you can ask uh, questions there or make your comments about Episode 3 and uh, the series in general. I mean, again, we're three episodes in. This is exactly what the uh, people who saw the preview saw uh, when they went uh, that uh, night in that L.A. theater. And I think they had a New York screening as well where they showed the first three episodes. So, uh, you know, the story is starting to shape. We kind of know the direction. And uh, interested in your thoughts, please join us. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, We'll be back next week with more. Thanks for listening.